know the trick to win this queen and game? Your friend just moved his queen here, pinning your pawn. So how do you promote this pawn? You won't win this if you don't know this trick. Rule number one, move your queen to a square that blocks all the squares of this king, forcing black to move their queen back. But your friend is a good player, so he'll make sure to keep pinning this pawn so you can't make any progress. But we have a little surprise for him. Rule number two, start giving checks with two targets in mind. You want to make sure this king is on the B file when your queen is able to give a check on the first rank. Let me show you. Check. King B6. And now we zigzag down the board this way. Now the king is on the wrong file. So we give this check again. We force him to go on the B file. So now we are ready for the killer move. Queen B1 sacrificing the queen. Because when your friend takes it, I'm sure you already saw how white. Do you think you're safe with black here? We agree on a draw way too early in Queen and games like this one. Remember this. When your friend promotes a pawn on the corner here, you have winning chances because this queen is obstructed by her king. Here, white is actually winning. Let me show you. Start with this check. If the king goes here, his queen is lost after queen a2 check. The king moves and you capture the queen. You're gonna tell me it's rubbish and he could have put his king on b6 instead, right? I'm sorry to disappoint you, but white wins here as well. After queen check, king here. Here. Queen check, king b7, queen check. And when his king is stuck on this rank, what is the winning move for white? King c7 and black cannot stop checkmate on the next move. The queen moves and now how do you checkmate with white? Can you believe white checkmates in just two moves here? Let me tell you how it usually goes. By now, you tried in your mind to sacrifice both rooks this way, but failed to find a checkmate on the next move. And you're right. Black captures back and not even Magnus can find a checkmate in one move here. So sacrificing the rooks doesn't work. Now you start thinking that bringing a queen here or there would be checkmate. But you'll quickly realize that the shortest path to get to this square is three moves. Are you ready? sacrifice the queen and now black has four possible moves but they all lead to checkmate on the next move if you take this way checkmate this way checkmate yeah but black can push checkmate and on the last possible move you got the id i let you checkmate on the next move this pawn is ready to queen on the next move and there is no way to stop this pawn with the rook the only way to stop him is with the queen which means white wins the rook and this should end in a draw it's hard to believe but black is able to checkmate in just two moves can you see it Usually the first two moves that come to our mind is this rook sacrifice that doesn't work or this one that doesn't work either. Then we usually find this move thinking we'll checkmate here but not this time because your friend queens and no possible check on this column anymore. And here the solution is putting this rook on what seems to be the worst possible square. But now if pawn takes, checkmate. And if he queens, checkmate. A swindle in chess is not not cheating. Here the GM Marshall is a full rook down but find incredible moves pushing this pawn. The rook moves to e7. Now he pushes and you have three possible moves but only one of them is good. Rook h5. But it's a big mistake after the crazy move. Rook h6. If you take it, another pawn move. Rook takes pawn is a draw. And if you try rook e1 to checkmate, I queen check. The rook is forced to take boom stalemate again what about rook d8 another crazy move rook on g6 if he takes you promote to a queen he takes it and b5 again but what if he moves his king instead slide the rook rook here we promote and when the rook takes we crush his dream of winning with b5 again with the same stalemate on the next move don't get scared if your king is behind the pawn we can still win with white but you have to know the trick cutting of the king is a big mistake because you just push the pawn king moves push again and when the rook tries to stop us we bring the king king c6 and king here king here we push the rook tries to control the pawn and after king b2 well done to your friend with white he just messed up this position because it's a draw now it's time to learn the trick to win with white and it's called outflanking start with a check king d4 and now the only move to win is 
King C6, like pushes. King B5, the pawn goes forward. King B4, one, we don't use our rook. And two, we let black push their pawn. And it's the only way to win. Let's go. C2, the rook controls promotion. And after king here, white plays king B3. And the pawn is lost and the game. Can you win with white? You gave so many presents to your friends by pushing this pawn. He blocked you with his king. And now you realize the only way to keep this pawn is to move your king here and it's a stalemate but white is totally winning here push the pawn and when he blocks you sacrifice the pawn because it allows you to get something way more important in pawn endgames which is called the opposition the trick here is once you have the opposition go after this pawn instead he'll try and stop you take the opposition again now attack the pawn and when he tries to defend we again use the same trick and now his pawn is lost he goes to g8 you prepare the red carpet and when he goes here here, make sure to not give this check please because after king h8 this is a draw instead take opposition again king h8 don't push the pawn or stalemate again play this move instead he goes there you go here he comes back and only now you can start pushing your pawn and finally get your queen to win the game I'm gonna trap you. This position is a draw, but I'm gonna set a trap and see if you fall for it. I'm gonna give you this check. And I'm sure the first move that came to your mind is to go forward with your king. Because all you want is to grab my last pawn thinking you are guaranteed a draw because I cannot checkmate with my sad bishop, right? Now what happens if I actually protect this pawn? You had everything planned, right? All you have to do is push this one and when the bishop moves, you force pawns to be exchanged and life is good right not that simple it's funny because i have this strange feeling that i trapped you because when you push who said that my bishop needs to move absolutely nobody i have a poisoned gift for you instead you happily take to find out only now that this pawn end game is totally winning for me but wait i said this was a draw all you had to do is bring your king here instead and wait how do you advance this pawn? And how do you protect it when the king comes here? Very often in endgames, the answer is to bring your king closer. The king attacks this pawn as promised. It's hard to believe white is winning, but attack the bishop. If your friend takes the pawn, he loses the bishop after king c7. King is now forced to move away and give up the only friend he had. But wait, it's never that simple with me. What happens if the bishop moves here instead? Now my friend, let me announce a forced checkmate in 18 moves and it doesn't start the way you think the winning move for white is to give up the pawn just like that the idea is that after the king takes the pawn now we go to b1 threatening to pin the bishop bishop moves and now it's just crazy but after rook h1 the bishop is trapped here the rook pins again here pin so here check and pin i love it even grandmasters resign too early in their games sometimes tarash playing with the white pieces thought that having his king cut off from his own pawn on the fourth rank was enough of a reason to have him give up because he thought if i push my pawn black attacks it i defend with my rook he pushes i push and black plays the killer move rook b8 ready to sacrifice the rook against the pawn and then promote to a queen do you agree with tarash i hope not because he was wrong he totally forgot something called the deflection here the crushing move is rook check deflecting this rook from the control of this square and after rook takes you now can queen with a check because the queen will go on a check frenzy not allowing black to queen but after queen e2 check and king b3 if the queen captures the rook is black losing now or just a draw why would the grandmaster blunder this move? Did he not know that in rook end games, the defending side must have his rook on the long side of the board? But now, at least you do know. The reason being that this rook needs to be able to give as many side checks as possible when needed. Check, king a3, the king goes forward, and now another blunder. Rook takes pawn, too greedy, black pushes, the rook goes back, rook g7, and now the decisive mistake, king a2 deserves two question marks 
works because now the blacking advances and his rook is chained to the A file. Because if the rook moves, checkmate. King moves, you push, king comes back, rook B7. And now all you have to do is control the possible checks on this file, playing rook D7. Rook goes back and now red carpet for this pawn. And no possible checks for white. The king tries his luck, we just push. And after rook here, check, the king goes to bed. And now what's the winning move for black? It's hard to believe looking at this beautiful knight in the center, but here, black is winning thanks to a beautiful Zugzwang trick. Start with a deviation. This pawn cannot take, otherwise the knight is gone. White moves his king, now you simply take the pawn, and when the king takes, you have to see that this knight is stuck, because if he moves, this pawn is gone. So the knight cannot move, but also the king, who's tied to the defense of the knight. So all we have to do is create a beautiful Zugzwang and lose a tempo. You're telling your friend, you have no good move next, so I pass. Your turn. And what do you do now? He moves his knight, this pawn is gone. He tries pushing, but we simply push as well, blocking this square. The knight moves, and we simply attack the second pawn. That cannot be defended. And I believe you're able to win this endgame with two protected pass pawns, right? 